Greetings fellow YouTubers, it's Apple Stump Bushcraft Stuff and Things back once again with another MRE review. Today's menu is menu number 20 from the Warnick Company of McAllen, Texas. This is a military MRE. Spaghetti with meat sauce is the main entree. Applesauce, carbohydrate fortified, cheese spread, wheat snack bread, a dairy shake which we also will call a salmonella shake, hot sauce, accessory packet A, a spoon, and the one and only flameless ration heater. So let's get to it. Due to a technical glitch today, I already opened the peelable seal on the MRE pouch with today's guest peelable seal opener. This is a zombie apocalypse knife by Browning. Full tang, quite sharp, drop point blade, and the official zombie apocalypse markings. First used today to open the peelable seal, and we'll use it some more to open peelable seals once the retort pouch has been heated up in the spaghetti that we hope is inside and is ready to eat. So let's get into this and see what what this thing gives birth to here. On top we have carbohydrate enhanced applesauce with a packing date in very large letters 286th day of 2004 and we have an infamous salmonella milkshake chocolate this time 292nd day of 2004 you might be able to see that right about in the middle at the very edge of the foil wheat snack bread mm -mm -mm -mm. again very prominent dating on this one 286th day of 2004 cheese spread it's going to have to be kneaded quite a bit because it's very stiff and a packing date on this let's see if I can decipher it here 274th day of 2004 again it's embossed on the foil accessory packet A 321st day of 2004 and this accessory packet contains a little bottle of Tabasco sauce, which appears to be still liquid. Gum, white tip matches, Taster's Choice Instant Coffee, hand sanitizer, lighthouse toilet paper. There's salt and pepper in there, and sugar and a non-dairy creamer. And I'm going to leave this accessory packet intact because there's nothing in there that I really care to uh, get out and use today. Ubiquitous flameless ration heater. This one has a date on it of 309th day of 2004. You see it down there at the bottom, perhaps. If the light's not too bright, it's right about in the middle of the screen now. I have a pot of water boiling on the stove in case the flameless ration heater doesn't do its job today. And finally, the main entree, spaghetti with meat sauce. Again, this is 14 years old from the 283rd day of 2004. It's been fairly carefully stored at room temperature or below, so I expect it to be uh, in line with the other older MREs that I've demonstrated and reviewed. So let's get all this stuff out of the cartons and put it on the tray. There we have it for the most part, except for the salmonella shake, which we are not going to open or drink today for obvious reasons. So, the salmonella shake is adios. There's the rest of it on the tray, and so we'll get a little bit of water and start the process with the flameless ration heater. Stand by for more. Okay, let's get to it. So, this is the spaghetti with meat sauce. Retort pouch, and I'm going to just inspect it real carefully here for just a minute. Make sure that the outer envelope is not compromised. I don't see any separations there. 
doesn't appear to be vacuum packed, but I also don't feel any terrible amount of gas in there or anything. Smelling around the edges, I don't find any odor. So let's use our peelable seal opener again, shall we? To cut the top of the ration heater open. More or less along the line of the arrows. That one might be a little low, I don't know. I guess we'll see. If it needs more open, we'll open up more. Okay, that'll do. So first I want to pull the element out a little bit. Makes it easier to get the retort pouch inside and centered on the element. To see on the back side what I'm doing here. Push them both in there. And shake it down to the bottom. Again, we'll center the element on there. And we have some bottled water to initiate the flameless ration heater. Fill line. See how close we can come to that. It takes about an ounce of water, more or less. A little bit more. And it looks like it. Fold the top over. Give it a little shake. And I think this one may be dead. Nope, it's starting to come to life. It's starting to get really hot now. I can barely hold on to that. So, <clears throat> yes, yes, yes. Very hot. Back in the pouch, or back in the box. If I can get it in there. Probably going to see a certain amount of vapor come out of there. pressure cook and explode on me. So we need a rock or something and I'm going to put it so it faces at about that angle up against the base of the tripod. And there it sits. Alrighty then. We'll take a short pause while I squeeze the daylights out of this packet of cheese and then we'll get started with the snack bread and the cheese spread on top. Alright, so let's open up the wheat snack bread. I don't think I'll need the peelable seal opener for this but I might use it anyway because I got this thing about knives. Popped out all by itself. How about that? Only one piece of wheat snack bread today. Sometimes they put more than one in a pack. And the cheese I have kneaded probably enough. I'm going to squeeze it down towards the bottom a little bit so I can open up a little pouring spout or squeezing spout, whatever, on the corner is what I like to do. It's kind of tricky with a big blade like this. Not desiring to cut myself. Yep, got it open enough. Okay, so here we go. Wheat snack bread smells good. It's kind of sweet smelling, maybe a little cinnamon. Not sure. Some kind of spice in there. It's a little gritty or fine grainy on the top. Here comes a little cheese spread on the corner. Fairly yellow for 14 years old. And let's give it a taste.
apart from being dry as you'd expect it to be, it's pretty good. I'm kind of a fan of the bacon flavored cheese spread and I also like the jalapeno cheese spread. This one's just plain cheddar. It does taste like cheddar cheese after a while. Not immediately when you first bite into it. I break off a section of the snack bread. And in honor of my buddy Polly over in the UK, we have a cheese buddy. There you go, Polly. Here's looking at you. Once again, the texture of the snack bread is pretty dry. The cheese spread helps quite a bit with that. All right. Let's open up the applesauce and I believe that we're going to find it to be brown and fairly watery. I might squeeze it around just a little bit to mix it. Once again we'll call upon our peelable seal opener to help us with this. Put it in here, shall we? That is not nearly as brown as I thought it would be. Not nearly. Didn't have any hiss of escaping gas when I punctured that envelope. There's quite a bit in there. It's uh, at least half a cup, I would say volume wise it looks fairly um, chunky it's not silky smooth like some apple sauces are it's actually got texture to it Does it smell it smells okay Taste test. Mildly tart, definite cinnamon flavor. Sweet enough, but not overly so. I wouldn't say that there was a lot of extra sugar in there, although the envelope did say carbo fortified. Have another spoonful. After the dryness of the wheat snack bread, I would say that that's a welcome addition. Kind of takes the dryness of the wheat snack bread away. So, now that the dryness of the wheat snack bread is away, let's have some more. I'm going to put a fairly generous helping of cheese spread on there because that's all we have to do with it today. And it's good, so I as well enjoy it. There we go. Yum. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm -hmm. That is good. It's nice and smooth. It's mild for cheddar cheese. What it reminds me of is Cheese Whiz. You know what that is? Cheese spread in a can. Quite similar in texture and quite similar in flavor. Oddly enough, for 14 years old, it tastes fairly fresh and it's not brown, it's yellow. Kind of an orangey yellow. Want a bite? Yum, yum, yum. Mm, mm, mm. I normally don't buy Cheese Whiz. 
So if I want some cheese on something, I buy regular cheese and put it on there. But there's no way in the world I would throw this out on a camping trip, on a hiking trip, or even for an emergency ration. That's good. I can imagine how much better it tasted when it was new. Another spoonful of applesauce, kind of mix it around with that. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> Flameless ration heater is cooking away. Ooh, ah, I'm going to handle it by the edges. It's very hot on the bottom, hot on top. And a little while ago, it was making all kinds of squeaky noises and boiling, bubbling, and uh, a lot of vapor coming out. So it's doing its thing quite well. It's very hot. So where were you in 2004 when this was a brand new MRE? I was going to the university at that time, working on my bachelor's degree, and that was the year that my mother passed away. More cheese on the bread. Yum, yum. Yeah, as I say, I think I'm going to use all of this cheese bread because it's very good. There's no hint of anything bad about it. It doesn't smell or taste foul. It tastes just like fresh cheese whiz out of a can. You put enough of it on the wheat snack bread and it's not nearly as dry as the bread is all by itself. That is good. Have a little bit more applesauce. Here's to your good health. All right, we're going to take a break of several minutes while the MRE main entree, the spaghetti with meat sauce, continues to heat up. Still have the pot of water boiling on the stove in reserve, but I don't think we'll need it. When I take it out of the heater, and uh, test the retort pouch for heat, then I'll know for sure whether I want to pop it in the boiling water or not. But for now, let's take a little break and I'll be right back with you. While we're waiting on the main entree, I had this thought of maybe we'll take a look at what's in these salmonella milkshakes. So, chocolate dairy shake powder fortified with calcium and vitamin D. I'm reading the label now, directions. Tear a pouch at notch, add six ounces of cold water, about one quarter canteen cup to pouch, fold over top of pouch, firmly holding the top of pouch, shake 60 seconds, consume promptly within one hour. And the net weight is 3.5 ounces or 100 grams. Some nutritional information on the back, which I will read to you. Calories 470 from fat 180 and fat there's 19 grams of which 3 grams is saturated fat 10 milligrams of cholesterol which isn't very much 260 milligrams of sodium which isn't very much total carbohydrate 56 grams which is close to 20 percent of your daily um, recommended intake Dietary fiber, zero. Sugars, 51 grams. Protein, 17 grams, which is all right. It's not bad. Vitamin A, zero. Vitamin C, 7%. Calcium, 45%. That's pretty good. Iron, 2%. Vitamin D, 38%. And then there's a lot of fine print. So here's what's in this bad boy. Non-fat dry milk. Non-dairy creamer, which is partially hydrogenated soybean oil maltodextrin, sodium caseinate, a milk derivative, dipotassium phosphate, polysorbate 60, and monoglycerides. And then there's sugar, whey, cocoa powder, modified food starch, calcium caseinate, cellulose gum, xanthan gum, carrageenan, 
acacia gum, natural and artificial flavors, and vitamin D. This was packaged by the Janus Brothers Packaging Company of Kansas City, Missouri. So that's what's in the salmonella milkshake, and they neglected to mention on the ingredients here, salmonella. But, might be in there, and we're not taking a chance, right? Because we're wise old owls. Back with you in a minute. Okay, the time has come to check the spaghetti with meat sauce entree. I can now hold the box that the retort pouch came in fairly comfortably in my hands. It's nice and warm on each side, and if it was cold outside, this would be a godsend, believe me. Warm your hands up really nice. But it's not too hot to handle, so let's pull out the flameless ration heater. Wow! Holy cow! Ooh, man, that's hot. Yes, it is. Okay. I'm going to try to pull out the retort pouch out of here without bringing along the heating element. That's hot. It's very hot. I don't think I'm going to need to put this in the boiling water, but I am going to wipe off the envelope before I open it because it's covered with water that has some of the FRH residue in it. I'll be right back with you. Here we go. I'm going to squeeze down the contents a little bit so that I have room to open it with my peelable seal opener and not get sloppy stuff all over the place. Yeah, it got a little bit on the blade, see? Wipe that off. Here we go. Ooh yeah, that looks like that looks like mountain house spaghetti with meat sauce whenever you open the mountain house pouches, which I highly recommend by the way. They're very good. This video, by the way, is not sponsored by Mountain House. Not sponsored by Browning. Not sponsored by anybody except good old me. So here it comes, the spaghetti with meat sauce. There's quite a bit in this envelope. I'd say probably close to 8 to 10 ounces. Actually, I can look on the box and see what the reported net weight is. Eight ounces. That's what it looked like. All right, let's mush it around a little bit here. Obviously present are little segments of spaghetti noodles. And it looks like there's meat. I don't think that there's chunks of meat, but well, kind of ground up like hamburger. I'm going to smell it. it. Smells like canned SpaghettiOs. Take a look there. All right. Smells all right. Give it a little taste. A little bit different. So the meat is more shredded than it is ground, so it's like shredded beef. Maybe some real actual tomato pieces in there. And the traditional Italian style spaghetti seasonings are present. It's not very salty. The uh, noodles have lost any texture that they once might have had. Let's try a spoonful of just mostly noodles if I can get them. They're just kind of pasty. They don't, there's no chewiness involved. They're not al dente or anything like that. They're just kind of pasty and they just dissolve in your mouth. There's hardly any texture to them at all. I would say the meat that's present in here has more texture than the noodles do. <clears throat> I 
I don't think that that tastes as good as Mountain House spaghetti with meat sauce does. But if you rehydrated the Mountain House spaghetti with meat sauce and then sealed it up for 14 years, it might taste similar to that, probably worse. Let's have uh, some more cheese bread and let's have some more cheese and wheat snack bread. This is really one of the stars of the show today. This is very good. Yes, indeed. I don't know that hot sauce would have improved that spaghetti any. Never in my life have I put Tabasco sauce on spaghetti, and I'm not going to start today. But some powdered Parmesan might improve that a little. Let's have some more. This is definitely one of the top components, highest rated components in this entire meal. Very, very good on this bread. It's very cheesy. It's as good, in my opinion, as fresh cheese whiz would be, which isn't bad, really. And just because I mentioned it, I'm going to go get some grated Parmesan like cheese powder and sprinkle it on top of here and give it another shot with that. They didn't include anything like that in the accessory packet, but they should have. Be right back. So well, here's what I'm going to sprinkle on top of there. This, I believe, comes from the dollar store, but it's similar to Parmesan cheese that's powdered or grated. Put a little bit of that on there, if I can get it to come out. Whoa, stop. It smells like grated Parmesan cheese, but I know it's not. Let's try it now. Looks like it snowed on the spaghetti, doesn't it? Can't help it, I have to have another spoonful of applesauce, that's pretty good. The applesauce almost has more texture than the spaghetti does. At least the noodles anyway. They're pretty soft and mushy and uh, the shredded meat in there is actually where the texture is in the spaghetti. Okay, so let's review here. We didn't and are not going to mix up the salmonella milkshake. The cheese spread, ate almost all of that, ran out of snack bread. So the wheat snack bread and the cheese spread, I give them an A together. The applesauce, I give an A. The spaghetti and meat sauce, I'm going to have to give that a B, maybe a B minus. It's okay. It would sustain you. It's flavorful. Um, I wouldn't and did not take a bite and spit it out. But after 14 years in the pouch, that just has lost its flavor, I guess. Um, if I had the chance to make up my own MRE, I'd put everything else in here but that and get a pouch of Mountain House spaghetti with meat sauce. Substitute it. All right then, this has been Apple Stump Bushcraft Stuff and Things. Another MRE review, this time from the Warnick Company, McAllen, Texas. Military MRE menu number 20, spaghetti with meat sauce, from the 2004 vintage. Hope all is well with all your families. And just as a side note, we've passed the 400 subscriber mark. So very soon I'll have a video uh, just about what our 400 subscriber giveaway will be. And that should be coming up in the next couple days. So, from the Apple Stump Wishcraft Stuff and Things homestead to you and yours, 
Take care, stay safe, enjoy life, and we'll be back soon with another video. Adios.